New York City. It's the city of dreams. It's the city that never sleeps. And it's a beautiful melting pot of people and cultures. With a population of 8.3 million, it's the biggest city in the United States and arguably one of the most recognizable and unique cities in the world. Put it this way, I've never been anywhere else where an entire platform of people erupted into song. <laughs> What do you have to say? So entertaining. New York moment. It's like a slice of the T vibe. Woo! Woo! I can't believe Miley Cyrus is on the subway today. I know. It's no coincidence that America's biggest city has the largest subway system in the United States. At 472 stations, the New York subway is the second largest subway in the world. For all its flaws, and there are many, the New York subway is simply an engineering marvel. Its golden combination of high frequencies, 24-7 running, and exhaustive express lines make it an incredible system. The subway is inextricably linked with New York City. It's what allows New York to breathe, to thrive. It's not an exaggeration to say that New York would not exist as it does today, were it not for the subway. So follow me as we explore the New York subway from an Aussie's perspective. I am Sharath and welcome to Building Beautifully. Before I continue, massive shout out to my monthly Patreon supporters. Please do consider supporting me over on Patreon if you can. Also, please subscribe if you haven't already, and do be sure to check out the rest of Building Beautifully, where I discover Sydney one story at a time. Amy and I arrived in New York on the 30th of December 2024. Right from the get-go, we were entranced. I mean, come on, this is New York City we're talking about. For starters, the city truly is really busy. Holy crap is it busy. I'm someone who loves the hustle and bustle of cities, but New York was pushing it even for me. Times Square was um, crowded and a little bit overstimulating, I won't lie. If I got a penny for every time I saw someone in Times Square dancing with a 360 cam to Empire State of Mind, I wouldn't have to do YouTube anymore. But hey, I really shouldn't complain. I went to the most touristed place in New York. What did I expect? Greenwich Village was really nice, as was Brooklyn. I feel like the neighborhoods of New York are what really make this city so special, honestly. There's an intangible sense of unity to everything, which probably comes from just how culturally diverse New York is. We had Chinese, Indian, Italian, Malay, Mexican, Georgian, and Yemeni food, a combination of food I don't think I've ever had in one week and probably never will again. Wall Street was pretty epic. We truly felt our inner finance bros emerging. God damn it, Steve, are you telling me you didn't put 70 bucks on the Dow? What on earth? I told you to do that yesterday. <laughs> Tell my wife I love her. God, my ex-wife's gonna kill me. I can't afford any more child support payments. <laughs> and Central Park. Oh my God, isn't it so amazing that one of the world's densest cities has such a huge expanse of open space? And the best part is, it's not just a park. It's got a selection of iconic locations, such as the Belvedere Castle. Although, when we were there, there were these preachers singing kind of terribly. They're so out of tune at that part. Shut up. The American Museum of Natural History was an absolute treasure. I was disappointed nothing came to life, but we didn't go at night, so that's kind of on us. The MoMA was also beautiful, an utterly fascinating and diverse collection of artworks. Amy could not believe that there was only a small crowd at Van Gogh's Starry Night painting. Isn't this really famous? Hey, we're not complaining. In the spirit of the art gallery, I actually created my own artistic masterpiece. I won't quit my day job. By the way, we were in North America for three weeks and it only snowed the very last day we were there. I'm not kidding. Glad it did eventually snow though. As Aussies, we really don't see snow very often. The High Line was overrated. Sorry, I don't know, maybe I'm missing something here, but it was just an elevated walkway. I guess the point here is more what it represents, urban revitalization. 
I mean, it's better than an abandoned railroad, that's for sure. One last thing, there's a lot of observation decks in New York. We went up one Vanderbilt, which gave us some breathtaking views of the city. Although, I do have to say, it had a pretty wacky interior. But for what it's worth, I think we got our best views of New York from Roosevelt Island, Long Island City, the Staten Island Ferry, and Dumbo. New York truly is a photogenic city. I definitely recommend visiting. Over-touristed cities might be overwhelming at times, but they're over-touristed for a reason. Let's say that. But all of this, it's just warm up. All of this is tied together by the New York subway. The New York subway has 472 stations in operation, with 399 kilometers of route length spread out over a shocking 28 routes. A stunning two billion trips were taken on the New York subway in 2024. To put that into context, that's six times busier than Sydney trains, Australia's busiest transit system. New York City is an anomaly. The United States is a famously transit averse country, which is something I do plan to dive deeper into in the final chapter of my North America series. But New York bucks that trend and bucks it hard. For context, the next busiest metro system in the US is the Washington Metro. With a ridership of only 167 million, it's 12 times less busy than the New York subway. New York subway system is numbered from one to seven and from A to Z, although it does skip a lot of letters. The subway names have become a regular part of New Yorker lexicon. I'm taking the six uptown. I'm taking the E downtown. Oh, right, yeah, um, uptown basically means north and downtown means south. Don't refer to lines by colors. No one does that. At first, the subway naming system is a little bit complicated. That's largely because New York's subway system is a complex spiderweb where lines regularly join up with one another only to split off again later. For example, the two and three trains start separately in Brooklyn. They then join up and head into Manhattan, where they then join up with the one to all run uptown together. Anyways, then they all split off again with the three ending in Manhattan, while the one and two both go separately into the Bronx. Yeah, it's pretty complicated and we haven't even talked about express trains yet. But honestly, after spending some time there, you get the hang of it. Something else that takes adjusting is that all subway stations are given street names, which we don't really do in Australia. Because streets often have more than one station, there's lots of duplicates. There's like five stations called 23rd Street. It's never that confusing though, just use your GPS. It sometimes feels like there's a subway station on every corner, no matter where you walk, and that entranced me. Manhattan just felt like a massive CBD. Sydney CBD has nine stations. Manhattan has 151. To use New York subway, you can actually now just tap on and off with a credit card or your phone thanks to Omni, which was released only in 2019. Embarrassingly late for a contactless payment system, I must say. But if you don't want to do that, you can get a Metro card, which is what we did. And um, it's literally a piece of paper. It's, look, it's so flimsy. And you don't tap this, by the way, you actually have to swipe it. Often twice if you swipe it wrong the first time. It felt so archaic. I can't believe this is all they had until 2019. Honestly, you could probably ignore all this though. If there's anything I learned from spending a week in New York, it's that paying for the subway is optional. New York subway's reputation truly does precede it in one regard, its cleanliness, or rather lack thereof. At best, it was poorly lit. At worst, there was rubbish, rats, the smell of urine, and just an ever-present sense that the subway is unloved. I mean, no offense, but Sydney's stations are paradise compared to most of New York's. But hey, don't judge a book by its color. It's unloved and underfunded for reasons we'll get to, but the subway is an operational behemoth. Manhattan is one of the densest places in the world, and it's only become that way because the subway is able to transport its millions of residents every single day. And additionally, millions more have been able to settle in the four boroughs that surround Manhattan, the Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn, and Staten Island, thanks to the subway. Straight away, I was blown away by just how frequent the New York subway seems to be. It honestly felt like we barely ever waited for more than five minutes. 
although that's probably because we spent most of our time in Manhattan. Indeed, Manhattan's major trunk corridors run anywhere from 10 to 36 trains an hour. Frequencies seem to struggle in the other boroughs though. But at least within Manhattan, you'll never be waiting long at all. There's something else that I think makes the New York subway so special, the express tracks. No other city in the world has express metro lines like New York does. Globally, express trains are generally used exclusively on commuter rail lines that are designed specifically for long journeys. Think Sydney's T1 that skips every station from Stratfield to Redfern. Express running is rarer on metro networks because metros are generally intended for shorter journeys. They're also usually underground and building four parallel tracks that effective express running requires, two for an all stops local, two for an express to overtake, is extremely costly. And yet, almost all the lines through Manhattan run both local and express services. There are parts in New York's Midtown where there are 20 underground train tracks all running parallel to one another. And that's not even including the Long Island Railroad, Amtrak or PATH trains. Do you have any idea how crazy that is? I'd be surprised if there is anywhere else in the world where 20 railway tracks run underground parallel to one another. Let's use the one, two and three trains to show you how the New York Express trains work. Have a look at this map. Between Chambers Street and 34th Street Penn Station, there are three red lines. The one train stops at every single one of the stations between these two. But the two and three only stop at Chambers Street, 14th Street and 34th Street Penn Station. This is possible because local trains, in this case the one train, run on the outer tracks, while express trains, in this case the two and three trains, run in the middle. Then at interchange stations like 14th Street, platforms on all tracks allow for seamless cross-platform transfers between express and local trains. Genius. This insane number of express tracks exist for a few reasons. The subway was built by multiple competing agencies, which is why there's so many lines running right next to each other. More importantly, back in the day, tunnels were built by cut and cover, which made it cheaper to build four underground tracks. These express lines make going across the city so much faster than it would otherwise be, which probably explains why the New York subway has prospered in a country where the average person owns like 11.9 cars or something. On top of all this, New York subway runs 24 seven, which is actually much less common than you might think. Only Chicago and Copenhagen do it on any comparable level. The New York subway is an engineering marvel, but beyond its cleanliness issues, it has many flaws. Firstly, good luck getting any phone signal while you're on your train. I get better signal in the middle of Kiringai National Park than I do underneath one of the world's densest metropolises. We were fortunate enough to not experience any major train disruptions, but the subway is known for those. I mean, there's an entire wiki article ominously titled 2017 to 2021 New York City Transit Crisis. Apparently in 2017, only 65% of weekday trains were running on time, which is abysmal. Thankfully, that was up to 82% in 2024, but I mean, that's still a decent way off 100%. Oh, and I won't really get into it, but crime is a huge issue too. But honestly, to me, the subway's Manhattan centricity seems to be its Achilles heel. The subway is a radial network with every single major line, bar one, the G train, going through Manhattan. That's pretty great if you're a tourist like me spending all your time in Manhattan. But if you wanna get from say the Bronx to Queens or Brooklyn, good luck. The focus on journeys purely to Manhattan really does reflect the assumption back when the subway was built that everyone would work in Manhattan and then go back home to the outer boroughs. But now people travel for all sorts of reasons, to see friends, to go shopping, or to maybe even work in a different borough, but they can barely rely on the subway for that. New York desperately needs more circumferential railways. It also needs to be expanded beyond its extremities. Within reason, of course, they don't need a second Long Island Railroad. So why have these things not happened yet? Well, the most obvious reason is money. The MTA who run the subway are very underfunded. What I'm about to say is somewhat an oversimplification of matters, so do take it with a grain of salt. But essentially, the MTA are actually largely governed by New York State, not New York City. And the state and city are in an eternal funding struggle with one another. I mean, while the city is big, 
only 44% of the state actually live there. So that's 56% of citizens who don't really care that much about the city and its subway. How do you think those citizens will care if the government spends billions on a subway expansion for New York City? Ignored and forgotten, perhaps. This is particularly problematic in America, where public transport is stigmatized and also divided across party lines. Democrats support it, Republicans oppose it. Suffice to say, it's generally much easier to get new roads built because to an extent, they're seen as a necessity, while public transport is superfluous, a vanity project. It's no wonder then that New York has only seen two relatively short subway extensions in the past decade. All right, I'm gonna be talking about those political issues a lot more in the final episode of the series, so be sure to subscribe for that. And when projects actually overcome these obstacles and get approved, they then go wildly over budget. Phase one of the Second Avenue subway, opened in 2017, cost an insane two and a half billion dollars per mile. Phase two, currently under construction, is apparently expected to cost four billion dollars per mile. What? <laughs> Congestion pricing in New York began on the 5th of January 2025, only a few days before we left New York actually, with a blanket $9 fee to drivers during most of the day who enter Manhattan. The aim is to redirect this money to improving the subway. The thing is, they've been trying to implement congestion pricing since 2019, with plans dating back all the way to 2007. And even now, Trump has technically revoked federal approval for the scheme, so its future is very uncertain. This is all to say, it's no wonder that the subway is so dirty, grimy and inadequate. The MTA is crying out for help and getting scraps in return. It's hard to fault them when they're battling the escalating cost crisis of the Anglosphere, political hostility, and an ingrained culture of car dependency. But frankly, all of this is what I feel makes the New York subway so special. It's one of the busiest subway systems in the world, tenfold busier than the next system in the US, in spite of all its adversity. It's an anomaly. It's an exception. It's begging to be so much more, but it's fighting so hard with what it has now. And I truly do think that there's something so admirable about that. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. We were on a break! No soup for you! You come back one year! These pretzels are making me thirsty! Milady, would you like to attend the horse? I do prefer the automobile. Dot automobile is dot very majestic and shall serve thee quite well in the it shall, joust. It shall, it shall. Let's go to the joust. Let us proceed. Isn't that so cute? I'm filming it. Aww. 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 Such a classic. Oh!